railway station briefs normally start from the train capacity. It's an architect's job really to take it back to the human and how people use the station. And certainly that's how we approached Reading Station. We wanted people to step out of the train and immediately go, wow. My commute to work is incredibly important to me. It seriously influences where I A, decide to work and where I B, decide to live. So Reading train station is a massive factor in my daily life. Previously, my experiences haven't been great. It was an ugly space. It felt worn and more complex than it needed to be. And that has meant that I haven't wanted to spend time in it. The situation at Reading was an infrastructure problem that hadn't really changed since the 1890s. This facility was totally inadequate for the number of people travelling on the station. There was just no room to move. So it was very clear right from the start that we'd need extra platforms and more through tracks. The brief itself was quite functional. I think that is part of the nature of it being an engineering-led project. But it can't just be about the functional requirements of trains. It needs to be more about the passenger experience. Reading needed an architectural input into it. Engineers are brilliant at designing things that will stand up or sit in the ground and that, but I think it's fair to say they're not very good at the frilly bits. Absolutely critical is an understanding of how people use the station itself. Most people wait on the platforms, but to access the platforms they need to go over the transfer deck or transfer bridge. The problem is that you can end up with Lots of different elements, canopies, bridges, lifts, escalators and stairs, which provide a very incoherent design solution. So what we thought was, if we use the canopies to, to cover the platforms, but also to lift up and wrap over the transfer bridge, doing that would act as a visual linking element to the entire station. It mediates really between canopies and, and this bridge in a way that I don't think any other station around the world has done. We really wanted to make it as intuitive a space as possible. So this streak of blue runs across the, the entire length of the platform. You see a piece of blue and understand where you are and where you need to go. It should just be this natural movement of either drawn to light or drawn to spaces. As you walk across the deck, the daylight coming in from the side signals exactly where the platforms are below you. By lifting the canopies up, you're not looking on top of a canopy, you actually reveal where you're going down, where the trains are. We wanted to make sure that there were no columns in front of the escalators because that, that can cause obstructions and can, and can cause blockages. The V column was an elegant solution whereby we could have a single point of contact with the platforms, thereby reducing the obstructions on the platforms. And the two points at the top were able to pick up the beams supporting the canopies. When you come down the escalators and you come down between the V column, you get that view through and you get an array of columns all lining up. It's like a Busby Barclay film. And I think there is a moment of joy there where you go, ooh, this, there's something special. One of the difficulties was that the station needed to be built while in full operation. So the station was only closed down for a few hours every night. Trying to build columns and build a deck during those few hours would have taken forever. It forced our hand, really, in terms of thinking about off-site prefabrication of elements and minimizing the number of components that needed to be assembled on site and being really efficient about the use of structure. We talked about building the truss frames of the deck off-site and sliding it across the top of the station, putting rollers on top of the columns and actually pulling it. At times, it was kind of overhanging, you know, trains passing through, which, which looked very uncomfortable. It was perfectly safe. 
Being able to build off-site and launch it across meant that we could build it more quickly, we could build it more cheaply and we could build it more safely. When all the commuters go away at night and come back in the morning, there's new bits of station for them there. It's almost like the borrowers have been in and they've kind of built these, these new bits of station. And that's almost magic. I have turned down other jobs because <laughs> on a daily basis I get to travel through Reading train station. I think it's a beautiful place to be in. It has a cathedral feel, it's quite cavernous. I love being able to watch the sunsets and sunrises and the different lights during parts of the day. There are places where you can pull yourself away from the daily commuter hustle and bustle to take time. So for me, Reading Station is my freedom.